Welcome back. You're listening to MMA Odds Breakers. Today we got Johnny Case from San Diego, California. Well, originally from Iowa, but now in San Diego. Uh, getting ready to fight a UFC fight night uh, on September 20th. What fight night number is this? Yeah, I have no idea yeah, what see, number it is. See, even the fighters don't know. There's so many fight nights now. There's so many fights. Like, I have a hard, track, hard time keeping track of everything. So, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's kind of crazy. It's, it's, um, are you one of those guys that just goes... I don't even know the name of the promotion half the time. I mean, obviously you're in the UFC, so you know that you know the name of the promotion, but you don't know the name of the card. You, ba- you barely know who else is on the card. You're just gearing towards September 20th, trying to fight, and that's it. You don't pay attention to much else. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's a good fair assumption. Um, I just worry about the things I need to take care of to make sure I'm prepared for my fight, and uh, the rest is really just you know whatever. I mean, I could care less. You're uh, originally from uh, is it Madrid, Iowa? Is that right? Uh, I'm from, yeah, yeah, Madrid, Iowa. Madrid, it's just Madrid, a little so suburb right up in Des Moines. Yeah. What was it like going from Iowa to San Diego? Like, explain that journey to me. How'd you end up down there at Alliance? Uh, yeah, it actually it started out, um, I after my last fight with the RSA, I fought a tough wrestler, EJ Brooks, and um, Miles Jury was actually in Iowa doing a seminar that week. And uh, he came to the RSA fight and saw me fight, and was getting ready to fight Diego Sanchez and thought that it would be a, a, a good, suitable training partner for him. And um, he invited me out to Lions to be his main training partner for the for that fight camp. And um, I came out and worked hard and gave him my all and, you know, like, really caught the attention of the coaches and the other guys in the team and started to like everybody. And um, it, it did so well, actually, that Jeremy Stevens actually wanted me to come out and be in his camp for Cub Swanson. And during that time, I was signed with UFC uh, to fight Joe Ellenberger. Okay. They're uh, actually, you're talking about uh, Miles Jury, who's actually fighting Takanori Gomi. He's the co main event on the same fight that you're fighting September 20th. So right now, you have two guys, well, at least two guys, getting ready to fight in the UFC. But Alliance Training Center, it seems like that every time you turn around, there's another guy getting out of, coming out of that camp. You know, is it tough having guys at the beginning of their camp, guys in the middle of the camp? And guys like you are just tailing off their camp, you know, trying to keep everybody together and, and make practices work. So, because you know, sometimes in the beginning of camp, I'm not in great shape, you know, so I have to go against you at the end of your camp. You know, I'm going to get beat up. I'm going to get discouraged. I might even get hurt, even though you're not trying to hurt me just because I'm not in shape and my body can't handle the, the intensity. Do you guys have problems right. with that? You know, trying to keep everybody on the same page and, and keeping the guys that are in the beginning of camp, you know, with guys that aren't going to aren't gonna hurt them up too much? Uh, yes and no. I mean, um, I mean, everybody out here is good. Literally every single person that is in that room training with the pro practice is good. They're good. You know, some might be good at stand up, some better on at jiu It's, uh, it just, it just varies. And, um, it's day to day as well. You know, some days you'll be getting the better of somebody and then the next day you'll come in and you're beat up and tired and they're, you know, raring to go and they kick your ass. So it's just kind of, uh, it's a constant, grind in the room and it just breeds for champions in my opinion it's just you never know going in there that day if you're gonna be the hammer or the nail and um it, it's just it just really makes for a good team atmosphere everybody's pushing each other and everybody's you know doing their best to uh to not only to to work hard and push each other but to make sure everybody's healthy and taking care of each other as well now for the folks at home johnny case is uh, 18 and 4 um versus uh tokyo dome who's uh 12 and 5 you're on a, is it six fight win streak, seven fight win streak right now? Eight fight, eight, eight fight, fight win streak. streak. Eight fight win streak. And your last fight, like you mentioned earlier, is against EJ Brooks at RFA 10. Uh, split decision. Uh, the, the fight was close. What, what do you feel like you could have done more of in that fight to make it go from a split decision to either finishing him, obviously, which is everybody's goal, or to at least make a unanimous decision? Yeah, that, that whole fight camp was just real bad for me. Um, I didn't have my normal training partners uh, to go with, my good stand-up guys that I spar with. I, I, I got two sparring rounds in the entire camp. Other than that, I was just grappling and, and drilling and hitting pads the entire camp. So I think that was a part of it. And I also got staff infection two weeks before the fight and wasn't able to train for, you know, a good five days there. So I think that really showed my performance. But also it was just... It was just, you know, he was a very good wrestler, and um, I, I think I really just, uh, I, I didn't stick to the game plan I wanted, which was to stay on the outside and use my striking. I I allowed him to, to close the distance and to, to work the clinch. So 
it was, it was a pretty ugly fight in my in my you know in my opinion. It wasn't how I wanted to perform, but when I got to, got to the W and um, moved on to my to eight eight in a row. Yeah, and not not doing bad. You even lost since two thousand ten. And it's not like you fought, you know, you fought once in 2010, then fought once in 2011, once in 12, once in 13. You actually fought three times in 11, twice in 12, and three times in 13. And this will be your, your first fight in 14. Um, how like You fought in October. And you seem to be a guy that likes to fight a lot more. How come you haven't fought yet in in uh, in 2014? Is it just because you signed the UFC and it kind of puts you in the shelf for a second? Or was there... Something else going on that kept you kind of on the, on the sideline for a little bit. Yeah, we were trying to to find opponents to find fights, and um, it just it, it wasn't working out. Uh, you know, we have guys say yes, and then they back out, or you know, guys they just couldn't find guys for me to fight. So um, so that was a the part there, and also uh, just yeah, getting signed, having Miles ask me to come out and train with him. That kind of put my my own personal you know, fight schedule on hold, you know, so I just come out here and uh, give them the best camp possible. And, um, and I knew it was just a matter of time before I could get, get signed with another fight, but uh, getting signed with the UFC makes it even that much better, you know. Where do you think this fight with uh, Taki Domi puts you within the 150-pound weight class? First, let's start with just within the UFC. Where does it put you? Where, you know, where's, what's going to happen with this, you know, for your next fight? If you have a great, because we all know it's got to be about great, significant showings. you got to go in there and prove a point. If you prove a big point, knock this guy out, finish him some way, you know, you've got 11 KOs and five submissions. Um, you know, if you make a big significant submission victory, a big finish, what do you think this is going to put you? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think that I, I still, you know, I need to be humble and I need to realize I'm still a newcomer to to the UFC. You know, people um, people start looking ahead too soon. I just, I just want to take this fight you know, get this fight over with and then we can assess whatever, you know, whatever, <clears throat> whatever anybody, you know, thinks, thinks next, I, I'm game for it, you know. Um, they say, you know, they want me to fight another guy coming off a win, that's great. They say, they don't want me to fight Anthony Pettis, that's great too. You know, I, I could care less who they want me to fight as long as, uh, as long as the fight and as long as it's payday. That's, that's the number one reason I'm in the sport. I'm here to fight and um, whoever they want to give me is who I, I'm willing to fight. Remember, John Jones was a was a beginner and a newbie too in the UFC when he fought for the title the first time, and we all see where John Jones is at now. So you never never can turn away that opportunity if it pops up, and always got to be looking for that next big fight because it's going to be coming pretty quick. You know, uh, I really appreciate Johnny coming on here with us here at MMA Oddsbreaker. It's been great to finally get a hold of you and get you on there, Coach Neil uh, Melanson. Obviously, he's my black belt coach and, and one of your coaches down there. Has nothing but great things to say about you, and it's it's kind of neat because he doesn't say much about anybody. Ever. <laughs> so when he that's, says something nice, awesome. it's, a big, it's a big deal. You know, when he calls me up and goes, hey, look, I hear you interviewing Johnny. It's a big deal. You know, this guy's good. He does this. He does this. It's, it's, you get him get him excited. It's a big thing because Neil, everyone that knows Neil personally knows he doesn't really talk much. Yes, yes. Uh, it's, man, it's been an honor to be able to work with him. He's such a great coach and such a great person, you know. He, he genuinely cares about his team and his fighters and uh, – he, he, he's very passionate about making sure that you excel and uh, get the most out of your training. And um, I just, I, I'm really thankful that he's here at Alliance and I really kind of sort of like him and I feel the same about, you know, him and him to me. So it's really great that he was actually, um, he, he actually told me about you too. He said that, you know, you were one of his black belts and, uh, it's really cool. It's really cool just to, to get the full interview going. Yeah. Tell, tell him, uh, have, have him tell you about how he gave my black belt. Like it was, uh, He's beating the crap out of me for for three months, and the way he tells it's even better because he was just beating the crap out of me, and I was just like, "Look, dude, am I am I ready for a brown belt at this point? Like, can you give me something?" And it, it was him, it was him, Randy Couture, and uh, this other guy, Patrick, and they just beat me up every day for three months. Like it was just, I just couldn't catch a break, and I was, you know, I'm the smallest guy in the room, you know, and, and all those guys, it's the small, the next smallest guy. It goes Neil, then it goes Patrick, and they're both about you know two sixty five, two fifty, like right in that neighborhood. And then <laughs> Randy at two at, at the time he was about two thirty, two thirty five, and then me at like one ninety, one ninety five, and just taking it. Oh, it was horrible. And then I come in and, and like a solid two weeks of I couldn't catch a break. Like it didn't make a difference. Like I would touch somebody and I was getting submitted. It was just it was horrible. But then after every every lesson, he go you know. 
you understand what we're doing here, right? And he made me show exactly what he was beating me with and, and show not only how to like like how to get in the technique, but then how to get out of it. I just couldn't get out of it. it was just, he was just too big, too strong. And finally, after that beating, he goes, oh, yeah, by the way, one day he calls me in and it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, here's your black belt. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, we've been, you know, you've been in a black belt test for three months. I'm like, oh, my God, it sucked. I wanted to quit so bad. Oh, it was horrible. It was horrible. But now I, that I have it, I'm honored, and, and obviously I, I use it pretty much every day, one way or another, uh, whether we're light rolling or, or, or just doing a heavy, heavy, heavy grappling session. I find myself using it every single day pretty much for my life of uh, everything that Neil taught me going through that black belt. So have him tell you the story's better. It's way better when he tells it. I'll ask him about it. <laughs> All right, Johnny, we appreciate it. Take up too much of your time already. I appreciate you coming on here. We'll uh, we'll talk to you here after the fight. Thank you, Frank. I appreciate it, man. Have a good one, bro. You too.